Tony Stark was just your run-of-the-mill genius billionaire playboy weapons dealer until he was attacked and captured by terrorists. Then, with the help of his cellmate, he turned a pile of scraps into an iron opportunity. This is Iron Man's evolution. Animated. To stop shrapnel from entering his heart, Tony equips himself with a mini arc reactor that also powers his suit. His first suit, the bulky Mark I, is mostly bulletproof and features both a flamethrower and missile launcher to defend against his captors, plus jet boots capable of flight to aid in his escape. Once free, Tony vows to never sell weapons again and creates the Titanium Steel Mark II. This suit features the Jarvis AI system. I'm online, sir. Added repulsors and Unibeam, a heads-up display, and enhanced flight abilities. Although, it ices up at high altitudes, but this is fixed by adding gold alloy to the Mark III suit composition, in addition to red coloring, shoulder-mounted guns, kinetic micro-missiles, and additional flares. With this update, Stark faces his former business partner turned Ironmonger. In Iron Man 2, the brighter, more streamlined Mark IV, which adds the ability to filter pee, is worn briefly, as well as the Mark V, which transforms from a suitcase into a thin-plated red and silver armor that only has his basic weaponry and is less durable. Due to his various arc reactors apparently poisoning him, Tony, supplied with a blueprint from his deceased father, creates a new element to power his arc reactors. His next suit, the Mark VI, features silver accents and a triangular unibeam, is immune and even charged by electricity, is water resistant, features additional grenade launchers, and has a single use laser. In this suit, he combats the dastardly whiplash. In the Avengers, Tony uses metallic bracelets to deploy the pod shaped Mark VII, which can assemble over Tony in midair. It's much bulkier and is the first suit with its own integrated arc reactor, as well as thrusters on the back to free his hands during flight, multiple use lasers, and much more firepower to defend against unwanted aliens. It's also apparently capable of briefly flying into a wormhole to nuke an alien mothership. In Iron Man 3, in an attempt to manage his PTSD, Tony builds many Jarvis-controlled suits referred to as the Iron Legion, including the Mark 8 with added Kevlar for protection against missiles, the more refined Mark 9 with an additional jetpack, the Mark 10 which has added flight stabilizers for extra speed, the Mark 11 built as a prototype stealth suit with a more detailed helmet, the dark and gold-plated Mark 12 with durable exoskeleton, the streamlined Mark 13 featuring a powerful rectangular arc reactor, the Mark 14 which is more lightweight for added speed, the stealth suit Mark 15 that slightly camouflages itself with plates that can switch from light to dark, the Mark 16 with significant upgrades to the camouflaging system, the bulkier Mark 17 with an oversized chest to fit a powerful unibeam, the Justice Chest Heavy Mark 18, which also incorporates the camouflaging system, the uniquely colored Mark 19, built for agility and speed, the black and gold Mark 20, capable of long distance travel, the fully gold Mark 21, built for high altitude flights, the darker Mark 22 with snazzy red flames, possibly intended as a war machine armor for Tony's friend Rhodey, the smooth camo armored Mark 23, capable of withstanding extreme heat, the bulky brown and gold Mark 24, built to endure heavy firepower, the Mark 25, which boasts powerful jackhammer arms, the green accented Mark 26 which retains the jackhammers and is able to resist powerful elements including gamma radiation, the blue and orange Mark 27, the only armor able to completely camouflage into its surroundings, the heavy orange and black Mark 28 which, like Mark 26, is built to withstand radiation, the durable gray Mark 29 which features a singular jackhammer arm, the sleek silver and blue Mark 30 and the updated deep red Mark 33 which both contain retractable vibranium blades and are able to transfer energy to certain ports for extra power, the lightweight teal Mark 31 able to reach high velocity speeds, the dark silver Mark 32 which has an enlarged unibeam but was built to be more agile, the silver-plated Mark 34 which incorporates a left-handed claw arm, the beefy red Mark 35 that can attach not one but two claw arms, Arms, the similarly plated orange and silver Mark 36 made for peacekeeping and crowd control, the light green Mark 37 built for deep underwater travel and the only armor to be stocked with torpedoes, the massive blue Mark 38 capable of lifting enormous amounts of weight, the white and black Mark 39 built for space travel, the gray and light blue Mark 40 which can reach speeds exceeding Mach 5, and the thinly plated Mark 41 which can disassemble and reassemble mid-flight. Huh.
In the same film, after inserting microchips into his arms, Tony is able to don the primarily gold and lightweight Mark 42 piece by piece. This armor carries over many skills and attributes from the Iron Legion and can be piloted remotely by Tony with an AR display headset. This time around, Tony battles a vengeful former nerd with help from his many armors. Following the battle, to prove his affection to his girlfriend, Pepper Potts, he destroys all of his iron suits and then finally gets surgery to remove the shrapnel from his chest, eliminating the need for his own arc reactor. Age of Ultron features the traditionally colored Mark 43, which has infrared to see through walls and incorporates a sentry mode to assist Tony when he's not wearing it. It can also attach to the humongous Hulkbuster armor, complete with a sedative gas sprayer and hydraulic puncher to subdue a raging Hulk. Tony also makes use of a group of new white and blue Iron Legion drones. Finally, the predominantly red and smooth plated Mark 45 is worn. This suit is marked with a hexagonal chest piece, and since Jarvis became part of a humanoid super being, Hello, Tony. this suit is instead run by the Irish Friday OS. I'm online, boss. In the Mark 45, Tony helps defeat evil sentient robots, uh, which he accidentally created. In Captain America Civil War, the Mark 46 is introduced and features various accent lights, a trapezoidal chest piece, and the first fully retractable helmet. In this film, Tony pushes for government regulations on the Avengers, but Captain America challenges the proposal, resulting in an iron cap clash. While the Mark 46 is able to analyze fighting patterns, Tony ultimately loses, and the Avengers go their separate ways. Then he changes his name to Tony Stank. In Spider-Man Homecoming, Tony uses the more silver Mark 47, armed with launchable grappling chains and remote Wi-Fi control, to keep tabs on Peter Parker from a distance. In Infinity War, Tony lends the Hulkless Bruce Banner the Mark 48, a more streamlined Hulkbuster suit, while Tony is outfitted with a new heart-shaped arc reactor capable of deploying his sleek nanotech Mark 50. This suit can form extra wings and weapons, as well as cannons, shields, and thrusters, helping him reach over Mach 10 and is perfect sealed for traveling in space. It can shoot off some of its nanotech and produce a suture spray to help heal wounds. Although all of this still isn't enough to prevent Thanos from snapping away half of the universe. And in game, Tony is starving and floating through space, but he's brought back to Earth and then raises a family. He gifts his wife the blue and gold Mark 49 rescue armor, featuring a displacer pack that can emit energy blasts. Meanwhile, Tony helps figure out time travel and sports a gray and red Quantum Realm suit as he goes back in time to help gather magical time stones and says a quick hello to his father. His latest iron suit, the Mark 85, features OG gold-colored thighs and shoulders with added power to generate force fields and redirect lightning blasts. This suit's gauntlets are capable of holding the Infinity Stones, that he uses to snap Thanos out of existence, causing Tony to sacrifice his life for humanity's survival. Life functions prison. And ultimately bookending the Iron Man MCU story. Well, until they dig him up for some prequel sequel side cool movies. Thanks for watching the video. This animation took over 500 hours to produce. Comment down below if you want to thank Aaron, your resident talent animator, for his hard work. And feel free to share the video to help out the channel. Check out some of the other animations, and if you like what you see, consider subscribing.